Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with the second of this two-part festive-themed After Effects tutorial. Now, if you've uh, run through the steps in part one, and I hope you have, because if you haven't, this isn't going to be much use to you, um, you'll have something similar to this, which is our three Christmas decorations, all nicely pre-comped and ready to edit. Our first step is to uh, arrange these uh, balls in 3D space, because we'll be adding a camera with a selective lens blur to them shortly. So we do that by selecting the uh, ball precomps and just toggling the 3D properties on the uh, timeline. So that's basically converted them into 3D objects. Now that they're 3D objects, um, we can arrange them how we want. So with the first layer selected, I'm going to tap P to bring up the position values and just hold down Shift to make things a little bit faster. I'm going to drag that to about 9, 920. And we'll leave the z-axis value as it is because that's our foreground ball. The second layer, tap P to bring up the uh, position properties. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, drop that back on the z-axis by typing in 500 into the z-value. And that'll push it right back. Now uh, with the layer selected, just going to hit uh, the cursor keys just to nudge it into place. Now I'm holding down Shift to, uh, do, to do it in 10 pixel increments. And with the third layer, tap P to bring up the position, and we'll type in 1000. Now obviously you want to make sure that the, uh, the ribbon goes off the edge of the frame, because you don't want any gaps appearing. And uh, that's pretty much how we want it. They're a little bit crowded on the screen, so I'll just select these layers and nudge them all a little bit off to the right. Now remember this is the final position for these uh, these uh, ornaments. Um, we will be animating them later on with a camera move but uh, we'll cover that in a second. Okay so the next thing we're going to do is create some snow and uh, you'll probably already know about the uh, CC snow effect but if you haven't this is how you do it. Right click and create a new adjustment layer. I'll call this snow front type CC Snow into your Effects and Presets panel and just apply that to the Adjustment layer. We want to um, buff it up a bit, so I'm going to go to the Flake Size and type 10, but we're going to drop the amount down to 200. And that'll give us this uh, much more appealing heavy flake and uh, fewer of them effect. Now I'd actually like to create um, a sense of depth and while there is variation, um, you may want to create a couple more layers. So I'm just going to duplicate the uh, adjustment layers. And we'll rename this one Snow Middle and Snow Back. And I'll just uh, rearrange them. Now the thing that might catch you out when you're creating adjustment layers with the CC Snow effect is that uh, it's not random. Um, so if you duplicate it, all you'll get is exactly the same snow particles just overlaid on each other. Um, the way we fix that is you just grab your layers and drag them to offset. And because it's a, an adjustment layer, you can grab the handle and fill out the gap it leaves behind just by dragging the end of the clip. So we'll do the same with the, uh, the rear layer and fill it out. Now with the middle layer selected, we're going to drop the amount down to 100 and the flake size down to 5. And with the back layer, we'll drop that down to 50 and the flake size down to 3. Now obviously you can play around with these to your heart's content, but uh, I think that gives us a pretty nice effect. Now if I take a quick look at the original, Obviously the next element we want to create is the text layer. So uh, let's go back to the final comp. Go to your text tool. And we'll type in Happy Christmas! Exclamation mark. And I'll just nudge that into place. Now before you ask, I'm using Chunk 5, which is a free to download um, OTF, Open Tech um, open type format um, font. I'll put the link um, up on the uh, the website so you can uh, you can find it easily. But I'm sure if you type in chunk five font, 
um, Google will do just as good a job as I will. Now what I'd like to do with this is uh, add an outline. So go to the layer styles and find the stroke effect. Twill down the properties. We might match the uh, outline color to the red of the ribbon we've got. And we'll just bulk up the size. We'll make it 14. Actually, now I look at it, I'm not so keen on the dark red. Let's make it a a slightly brighter, happier red. There we go. And still, uh, with the text layer selected, right-click again, go to Layer Styles, and select Outer Glow. And we'll uh, just pick the light green to give us something to refer to, but lighten it right up, get a nice pale green. Now because we've got the stroke value on, you can't see the glow because the stroke is essentially uh, blocking it out, so we'll just make the size bigger. I'll take it up to 75, and that'll just bring it out of the background, but without making it too obvious. That's why we pick the, uh, the pale tone of the background color. Now the next step is to create the uh, handwritten um, from, so I'm going to use the uh, type tool again, create a new text layer, and we'll type in from, but we're going to find a different typeface, if I can remember what the hell it was. Okay, that'll do, Lucida Calligraphy. Um, I don't like the way it looks, so we'll just uh, tap the metrics and set it to optical, just to close it up a bit. And maybe we'll play with the letting a little bit more, just to close it all up. Set it to minus 30. And we'll nudge that in so it sits just over the top of our happy Christmas text, and around the middle. And again, right click, select Layer Styles and Stroke. Match the stroke color to the one we picked for the bigger text, and we'll just bulk it up to about eight. Now you can leave it like that, um, or you can apply an effect, do whatever you like, um, but I'm going to um, use the write on effect to create that handwritten style. So with the from text layer selected, hit Control Shift and C to pre comp it. And we'll hit OK. And I'll just double click to bring it up. And the Effects and Presets panel find the Write On effect and just apply it. Now, um, if you follow the order tutorial, you already know um, how this works. But for those of you that don't, basically what we're going to do is uh, use the brush position and set it to the beginning of the text. Increase the brush size until it's about the uh, maximum width of any of the character legs. So in this case, it'll be about eight. So it's really important that uh, you take this step by step. So we're going to tap the stopwatch for the brush position to create a keyframe. And with the text layer selected, tap U to bring up the uh, the effects properties that have keyframes, so it'll bring up uh, right on with brush, brush position in the uh, default setting. Tap page down. I'll we'll just uh, zoom in so we can see what we're doing a bit, bit better. And move it forward. And just keep on hitting page down to advance the timeline. And move the brush position. You know what, I'm actually going to get rid of the uh, layer style because I think it's getting in the way, so we'll just uh, turn the visibility for that off. Sorry about that. But as you can see, what that happens is it frame by frame creates a brush which goes over the top based upon the keyframes that we're setting. Now you'll see these little um, ball shapes. They're basically showing how many repetitions of the, the sphere or the brush itself are being uh, used. We actually want to uh, increase the number of balls, so drop the brush spacing right down to about 0 0.006. Okay, so I'll just uh, carry on tracing.
but you really don't want to be watching me doing this all night so uh, I'll fade to black on this one and you can pick it up after the break okay so when you're done uh, you should be looking at something like this and what I'll do is I'll just uh, change the brush color now we can um, set the paint style from original image to reveal original image and instead of painting over it now when I scrub through the timeline you'll see that it draws it on like text which is exactly what we're after now I realize now that I shouldn't have applied the layer style before this so um, I'm just going to twirl it down and uh, hit control X just to cut it and then go back to the final comp and hit control V to paste it and it isn't appearing because I haven't got the visibility turned on so uh, now when I scroll through you'll see we get this nice hand-drawn effect you may recall from the original we've got uh, just a very very simple placeholder for your name here and now you can type that in what I'm going to just do is uh, duplicate the Happy Christmas layer and drop that down to the bottom and we'll say short form video now before we uh, get to the camera stage I'm just going to pre-comp the, uh, the three text layers that we have um, not just for the sake of tidiness but also uh, I found that adding the layer and the um, lens blur that we're about to apply really f <laughs> really plays around with the uh, stroke effect that we've added to these text layers so with the three text layers se selected control shift and C I'll call it text group pre-comp and uh, just move all the attributes into a new pre-comp now we can create a uh, new camera now the 50 mil default settings will be fine and I should stress that this is um, specific to CS5 and CS5.5 um, mainly because I don't think CS4 or CS3 had the uh, enable depth of field um, tools that CS5 and CS5.5 introduced I could be wrong um, but I can't really check it right now because I don't have either of those um, installed on my system so uh, choose the uh, standard 50 mil and we'll leave these uh, set as they are just make sure depth of field is, is uh, enabled and we'll just hit OK and we can do a little bit of experimentation so I'm going to set the aperture really wide and if you know much about cameras you'll know that uh, a wider aperture gives you much narrower depth of field so I'm going to set that to 200 pixels and already you can see the effect happening in fact, that might even be good enough to leave as it is. In fact, yeah, I am pretty much happy with that. So we're just going to round it up for the sake of uh, anal retentiveness. And we'll call it 1500 pixels for the focus distance. Now, uh, just to finish this all off, I'm going to move the uh, timeline indicator to about the six second mark. I'm going to twirl down the camera properties again and go to the transform settings and just tap a keyframe on for point of interest and position. Now we can press and hold on the camera tool and select the Track XY camera tool. And with the timeline indicator back at the beginning, just hold down Shift and that will lock the uh, camera tool to a horizontal. And we're just going to drag it. Hello, something went wrong there. <laughs> the sharp eyed among you will have noticed that I've forgotten to do something. We'll just uh, undo that and go to the text group pre comp and make that 3D as well. So um, back with the timeline indicator at the beginning of the timeline hold down shift to lock the uh, XY camera tool into a horizontal and we're just going to drag it over to the right hand side of the screen. Now when you preview this through you'll notice one slightly irritating thing and that's the baubles are moving, the text layer is moving but the snow is not and that's why we created three separate layers so with the snow front layer selected and hit control shift and C to pre-comp it and 
and make sure the move attributes and new composition toggle is, is switched on and just hit OK. I'm going to turn that into a 3D layer as well and twill down the properties for the snow precomp. And we're just going to increase the scale, probably up to 150. And we'll nudge the position until it's covering the entire frame. So if I've judged this right, we should... No, I need some more scale. So let's take it up to 200. And we'll just move it back a bit. So what you, you need to make sure um, is that this frame is covering the actual video frame at all times. So yeah, that's pretty much done it. Okay, just a couple of uh, final touches. Obviously, we've uh, lost our write-on text. So I'm going to go to the six-second mark, go to the From Text layer, and you'll see that the timeline indicator is already lined up where we left it in the final comp. And I'm just going to drag this layer holding down shift to snap it to the timeline indicator so that it starts at the six second point. Now we can go back to the final comp. It doesn't actually start drawing until everything's in view. I also want to uh, reveal the name at the bottom just as the from text is finishing. So we'll uh, move the timeline indicator to the eight um, 8 second 10 frame mark and I'll just uh, double click to open up the text pre-comp and I'll crop it to that point and we'll just add a straight linear wipe set the wipe angle to 270 transition completion to 100 click the stopwatch to create a uh, keyframe Hold down shift and hit page down twice. And that'll nudge it forward 20 frames. And we'll just finish off the transition by setting another keyframe to zero. So now we get the from drawn on and the name linear wiped on underneath it. Okay, so we're almost done. Might just add a new adjustment layer and find the curves setting. Drop that on. Just darken it down. Just tweak it ever so slightly. And of course, the ever faithful vignette. So make it a dark green. Hit OK, go to the ellipse tool, double click, set the mask to subtract, feather it to 200 pixels, and just expand it to 100. So there you have it, that's uh, that's what the rendered effect looks like. Um, I think the original was slightly better, but then I always have a little bit more time to play around with the, uh, the test files. And obviously you're seeing me create stuff live uh, when I do the project recordings. If you want to grab the project file, um, then you'll find it up on my website at shortformvideo.com. Um, and until next time, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for watching.